Hey, what's going on everybody? You're watching Too Long Didn't Read Filmmaker, where the answers comes first, the reasons come last, but we're constantly and always still learning. So today we're gonna find out whether or not Viltrox's 85 millimeter F 1.8 Mark II for either Sony mount, Fuji mount, Canon mount, what have you, is gonna be the right lens for you and your overall camera setup. And I wanna thank Viltrox for sending this out to me so I can provide you with my review today. Now you're currently looking at this shot for my Tamron 20 28 to 75 at 28 millimeters. So this is probably gonna be super close, but here's the 85 millimeter. And here we are at 85 millimeters shooting wide open at f1.8. I know this is extremely close up because I can't move the camera any further back. And uh, so you're gonna have to just look at this mug pretty close up for the rest of the video. Now, before I continue on the rest of the video, I just do wanna say that if you're a photographer looking at this lens, I'm sorry, I'm not gonna be looked T talking about it as a photographer. So I'm not gonna be pixel peeping at 50 megapixel images. I'm just gonna be looking at standard video resolutions. So 4K, I guess people with 8K and 2K, but I'm primarily in the 4K realm. So that's how I'm gonna be looking at it, all right? So let's continue. This lens comes in at $400, and Viltrox has been on a kick with how they're building out their lenses because I've reviewed a couple of them on this channel. 24 millimeters as well as their APS-C equivalents. And Viltrox, in my opinion, is killing it for the budget because the one feature that they did that I love across the board is that the manual focus ring is fully mapped out, which means if you wanna repeat focus, you actually can. If you set up AB points on your manual or wireless follow focus or your focus puller, they're gonna be able to do it over and over and over again. For some people who might not realize this, but some fly-by-wire lenses, especially the old ones, you couldn't do it. They weren't mapped out. So you could just move the lens a little bit and you move it too fast and it will shoot past whatever it is you're trying to focus. It was a bloody nightmare, but no. Viltrox has kept up with their mapped out follow focus. Good on you, Viltrox. Now, in terms of the focus throw, this telephoto 85 millimeter lens has a 270 degree focus throw. And this is really notable about Viltrox for doing this. Some people might say that's too much. Not really, because when you're shooting at 85 millimeters, especially when you're getting a close up shot or what have you, if I move just a little bit forward six inches, if the focus throw was only like 100 degrees, that means they would have to ever so slightly move it, and sometimes they'll overshoot it. So you do want this longer focus throw so you can make those minute adjustments. But because it does have an autofocus capability, well, you're fine. Like you can still do autofocus just fine. So Viltrox is just giving you the best of both worlds for whatever it is that you wanna do. But let's also talk about the optic quality because they're still continuing this tradition of pretty decent optics at the price. Now at f1.8, when you're looking at me right now and I'm moving around, it's generally quite sharp. Like to the eye, it looks sharp. But if we're gonna get really nitpicky here, yes, there is ever so tiny bit of softness in the center, not a lot, not noticeable, honestly. And when you go to the corners, it is going to be a little bit softer and not sharp compared to the center. Again, not a big deal when it comes to a filmmaker because we're directing you where we want you to look. And we do see some chromatic aberration as well. And that, you know, again, I don't really think that shows up a lot when it comes to filmmakers. It might just show up in certain situations, in which case stop down to about f2.8 and you'll be fine. For minimum focus, this is pretty typical. We're looking at approximately 2.6 feet or about 80 centimeters. When it comes to flares, the 85 millimeter uh, focal length generally does have more flares, especially on the full frame realm. And you can kind of see that we get that ghosting loss of contrast when the light hits it just right. But if you put on the included lens hood, lens hood does a good job to block that out so you can keep the contrast in your image. Now, when it comes to focus breathing, as you can see in this autofocus test as I'm walking towards the camera, we do see focus breathing appearing when you're doing these really long, infinite to close up racks. If you're just kind of staying within a scene and you're not doing such a crazy amount of uh, racking focus from infinity to close up, you're probably not gonna see that focus breathing, but I just wanna make sure you know that the focus breathing is there. 
Last but not least, when we talk about vignetting, there's really not a whole lot of vignetting going on here. There's just a little bit when it's wide open, but when you stop down to about like f2.5, 2.8, it quickly disappears. And when it comes down to it, the vignette is probably not going to show up too much in a 16 by 9 shot. If you have the cinema scope bars over it, it probably really won't show up. As a photographer, it'll probably show up just a little bit, but that can be corrected. Now, if there's one nitpick that I'm going to have on this lens is very similar to what I said about the 24 millimeter lens, uh, f1.8, and that is the lens hood it leaves a lot to be desired because it's primarily made out of plastic and it never feels like you got it on just right. You feel like you're cross-threading it. So I really wish that they made like a metal one that would have been much better, more sturdy, and much easier to lock on for the lens. So what's the bottom line here? Is the Viltrox 85mm f1.8 Mark II, whether it's on a Sony mount, Fuji, what have you, is it the right lens for you and do I recommend it? Now I've said this with my 24mm lens, for a full frame autofocus capable with a mapped out manual focus 270 degree focus throw, you can repeat focus finally on a flyby wire system, at $400 it is a steal. Now, interestingly enough, the Sony comes in at $200 more. Now, I don't have the Sony lens to actually give you a full true comparison, but this does come in cheaper. So, when I, I'm always thinking about things on a budget. If you can save money and the difference is not noticeable, then go for it. And at this point in time, based on how the lens works, good autofocus, good manual focus, Flares are pretty standard from what I can tell from an 85 millimeter lens. The only thing is, is that yes, at f1.8, there's a little bit of chromatic aberration that can show up in certain scenes, but otherwise it's quite sharp wide open. I don't necessarily see a true reason to go over to the Sony one for $200 more. I think that for what this is, it's perfectly fine. It's going to do the job, especially if you're trying to keep things on a budget. Now. Viltrox, this is, they're not done. They have a 85 right now, and then they have a 24. There's a 35 and a 15 millimeter coming that they announced last year. And they also announced like a 13 millimeter ultra wide. So when it comes down to it, if they're staying in this like 400 some dollar range level, for you to get all four primes, $1,600, and you're good to go. You have a really, really good narrative filmmaking setup in terms of prime lenses. So, I have to say, yeah, I do recommend it. If you're looking for a portrait lens or anything like that for your film stuff, definitely consider the Viltrox. And hey, that is it for this week, everybody. If this video has made all the influence in your purchasing decisions, I would truly appreciate it if you check out my affiliate links down below. Again, this costs nothing extra to you. It just gives me a little compensation so I can continue making videos like this for you. And if you want to support the channel in other ways, I do have my super thanks turned on. If you go through that route, I sincerely appreciate you for supporting this channel. And otherwise, uh, <laughs> if you have any questions or comments, Go ahead and leave it down below. I will get to them as fast as I can. And until then, like, subscribe, and share, and I'll see you guys in the next one.